So we have already done up the decision tree and calculated the EV and selected our best decision alternative. Now there are times when we can receive further information, some updates, some modifications of our view about the future in terms of changing the probabilities, in terms of um, new perspectives and so on. So we would like a way to um, steer our decisions, either to reinforce it or else we might, we might even change it. And uh, more specifically, we will apply Bayes' theorem to incorporate those additional inputs and changes. So this section discusses how we can do that. To do that, we need to introduce a notion of con consultant. So by consultant, I'm using this term rather uh, generally here in the sense that a consultant can be a human consultant giving advice uh, or it can be a company whose main purpose is to consult or it can be market research as we can see in this slide or it can be any device, maybe a dice even, that might um, alter our views about the future. Okay, so the consultant is to inject some change in our perspectives. Now, normally uh, we would not ask any consultant. We would ask someone, some company, some device that we trust, right? So there must be some credibility in the consultant. So we immediately stumble upon this challenge. We must have a way to quantify the credibility of a candidate consultant. For example, ask that person, ask that person, but should we trust that person? We need to see the credibility. Um, hire that company, right? Because they often produce good uh, outcomes, good prediction, and I need to see the cred credibility. Not in terms of a resume or a company profile, but in some numerical form that we can use. So number one, we need a way to quantify the credibility. Number two, if we have done one successfully, how can we incorporate in, in, uh, incorporate those numbers into our decision tree calculations so as to either reaffirm our choice or else even change our decision? So to see that, let's take a look at how our decision tree might look like if we were to entertain the possibility of having a consultant. So the research here means we hire a consultant. And the no research here simply means we first decide, should we hire a consultant, right? So of course the consultant needs to be good. And what do you mean by good? We'll, we'll just talk about that in a while. Uh, if we do not hire a consultant, then we are back to our our original tree, which has been shrunk to this uh, small real estate here, right? But you can see that all the payoffs are the same. And if we were to hire a consultant, then the consultant will tell us, mm, I think the future is bright. I think S1 is likely to happen. Yeah. So the consultant will tell us whether he or she thinks that S1 will happen, S2 will happen, S3 will happen. Not with a probability, but um, he, he or she will think, right? So I think that the economy will do well. And if that's the case, then we can decide whether to buy more shares, hold steady, or sell our shares. Then we, again, uh, because this is a duplication of our original decision tree, no matter what we decide on, we will face the consequences because economy or the share stock, mar stock market will uh, do well, stay so-so, or do poorly, uh, kind of independently from what we decide to do and what the consultant says. But sometimes it's not because the some, sometimes we are bound by company policy that if we if the consultant were to say economy will do well and then by company policy or by the investment fund uh, guidelines or whatsoever, right, we are forbidden from um, selling our shares because economy will do well why are you selling your shares right so uh, let's say if d3 is selling shares then d3 the whole branch will be truncated off because it is not allowed so when we go high when the consultant recommends high d3 branch will disappear example and 
uh, if the consultant says economy will not do well, right, then you're forbidden from selling shares because you'll be selling at a loss. So if the company or the investment guy says D1 cannot happen, if consultant says economy will do badly, right, then we'll only be choosing between D2 and D3. So you see that in certain cases, decision trees allows us to visualize uh, what might be the path, right, the thought process. As time passes, uh, events happen, uh, if this, then that. So all these are very visible here. And what I'm trying to illustrate here with the removal of D3, removal of D1, depending on the path, is that uh, these are dependent um, alternatives, dependent decision alternatives, dependent upon the outcome of the previous event load, right? In our illustration here, they are completely independent in the sense that we entertain all possibilities. We are still free to choose all possible decision alternatives. So notice also that the payoffs haven't changed. They are the same. In fact, it's a complete duplication or triplication of the same decision tree that we have. Okay. So the consultant is going to say high, moderate, low, and our decision tree from a simple uh, tree like this has now been uh, expanded into a, a new level that is, should we hire the consultant? Okay. So to hire a consultant, it must be because, because this is decision no, right? We earlier on have already learned that for a decision node, the EV of a decision node is the max of the branches, the EV of its branches. So what this means is that to decide to hire a consultant, the consultant has to produce a net EV that is higher than our unassisted EV, our original EV that we didn't hire the consultant. Okay, so the consultant needs to be good in that sense, then we hire. All right, and of course, all these, just to give a bit of heads up, is to assume, first of all, that the consultant did not charge any fees. In, uh, to, be, to be practical, if you're hiring in a, a very good company, typically you're paying extra dollars, right? So if they give you uh, good advice and you end up getting higher EV, you might want to take into account that they will charge you high fees as well. If they charge you high fees and they give you good good advice uh, is that you know after netting off everything is that still going to make sense and, and so uh, we'll, we'll discuss that after we learn how to incorporate our consultants advice and evaluate the decision tree again so notice first of all that we will look at this structure it is still a decision tree and we need to evaluate the decision tree just like the previous case the simple case um, the only thing is, how can we update the probabilities, especially at these branches here, when there is the presence of a consultant, right? So this is what we want to do. Now, we need to basically digitize the, or quantify the consultant's credibility first. How reliable is the consultant? Because if it's random, then it is like throwing a dice. But even the dice has the credibility of... Uh, you know, uniform distribution in that sense. So uh, our prior belief, so prior to asking the consultant, all right? So prior to asking the consultant, we have this belief. Probability of economy doing well, 10%. Staying so-so, 60%. Going down, doing badly, 30%. Yeah? So the question is, uh, can we quantify the reliability, the credibility of our consultant, the market research company, and how can we update, revise our probabilities. All right, so let's welcome Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule is basically the statistical tool theory that we use to update our prior probabilities, prior to asking consultant. So we have consultant uh, giving us the credibility uh, matrix like this and we will then use Bayes theorem to um, slice and dice the probabilities right and then we will be able to uh, update our uh, new branch probabilities we call that the posterior probability so we have prior we have posterior prior to asking consultant this consultant 
with this credibility matrix and after, so posterior uh, probabilities. Now let's take a look at this credibility matrix. It has some special features. First of all, we recognize uh, state of nature. So it's always about state of nature here, state of nature and I123. First of all, I123, uh, the number of columns of I's need not be the same as number of rows of S. So there can be three state of natures and two columns or five columns for that matter. Okay, so it is not connected. Now, what are these I? I of one, I of two, I of three. The easiest way that I can offer you is to think of I of K as consultant, as the event that the consultant says S of K. All right, so, so think of it this way. That I of 1 means the consultant says S of 1. Remember what is S of 1? Let's try. Remember what is S of 1? Consultant, I of 1 is, what is I of 1? I of 1, think of, think of it as consultant says or recommends that S of 1 will happen. Well, that's an opinion, right? Because consultant, after making research and analysis, will present this one page executive summary that says uh, it is our opinion to feel that S1 will happen. Yeah, that's what they say. But will S1 actually happen? Maybe so, maybe not. Especially with a credible consultant, very likely S1 will happen. But for a random consultant, yeah, you know, half half the chance or something, right? So um, important thing now that we, we see this, the example is to say that I of one, think about it as Consultant recommends S of 1 will happen. Now remember what is S of 1? Uh, S of 1 is, to, is basically that the economy will do well, right? Consultant uh, uh, says economy, economy will uh, be good. All right. So uh, easiest way to think of I of 1 consultant says s of one whatever s of one is for example if s of one means tomorrow will rain and we ask this weather forecast station right will tomorrow rain weather forecast station says hmm uh 80 percent probability and we take that 80 percent probability as yes right tomorrow rains then event i of one means weather station says s of one so weather station says tomorrow will rain yeah so very easy to think about that so now let's just as another example, uh, I of 2. What is I of 2? I of 2 said uh, basically is the event that. Why is it an event? Well, because when we hire the consultant, the consultant will go away, do analysis, do research, data collection, database search, whatever it is, and then comes back with a recommendation, right? So before looking at the recommendation, we might have a guess at it and say, Hmm, what do you think the consultant will recommend? Ah, that is giving rise to the chance element, that is the, the event. That means we don't know yet, we will see. And when we open up the executive summary, it says S2. Okay, so that means the event that we see that the consultant says S2 will happen. So if S2 means the economy is doing so-so, that means that when we meet the consultant, consultant says economy is so-so. All right, and just to finish up, uh, I of three means consultant says S of three will happen. And that means consultant says, because we have defined earlier on, what is S of three? S of three is economy uh, will be bad, right? Okay, so, so consultant says economy will be bad. 